How's it going guys? So if you are relatively a beginner in Blender, I think there's a couple things that if you do them today, they can really make you feel and look a lot more like a experienced Blender user and there are things that you can do today that aren't really difficult to wrap your brain around. So for today's video, I wanted to pick three and these are topics that I've covered on the channel before. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link in the description a couple more deep dives into these topics so you can go into them if you want to or if there's something that you haven't done before. So what I'm gonna talk about today is lighting, shading, and animation. Three things that you can do today that can really make your art just go a little bit above and beyond. So let's get into those. So my first tip is getting better at your lighting. Now in the description, I have a playlist dedicated to lighting and lighting tutorials um, geared for beginners and intermediate users. So here's what I did here for this light. Let's go ahead and turn off all of these lights and let's just go to the standard HDRI light. Now this is default settings, standard HDRI and it's not bad, it's certainly a good start, but what I like to do is use HDRIs as supporting lighting. So what I'm gonna do is give it, so we'll give it a strength of 0.3, and then let me show you kind of my uh, lighting breakdowns. So the first thing I did was I added two spotlights, one that hit the background here, kind of give it more lighting on this side, less lighting here to give it more dynamic kind of vignette. Then I added another spotlight right above that gives it that lighting um, from that top, that good top lighting hits it here and gets it right there as well. Then I got two area lights, which are just super soft lighting by default, which I really wanted for this. So I hit a light right here at the front, giving you a highlight here and filling out this. But of course this area is kind of lacking. So I got a key light that's much brighter than all the other lights here to really give you a nice highlight and round out this whole design. And there you have a much better looking design than just relying solely on HDRI lighting. Now, sometimes it is appropriate to only use an HDRI as your main lighting, but in instances like this where having more control gives you more an artistic expression and makes it much more, you know, just makes it pop more and gives you more dynamic look, making your own lighting and really honing in on your lighting style really will give you a benefit much farther down the road when you're getting better at your craft. My next tip is learning a lot more about procedural materials. You may be in this spot where you're kind of throwing noise textures and making your roughness a little bit better on materials, but I would really recommend getting a deep dive into procedural materials. And the reason why I love them is they give you so much control and really give you exactly what you want in a design. It gives you a lot more control and you're not reliant on image textures, which are set in stone. That's it, you can't really change them. Procedural materials, you can change whatever you build. Um, and they're really cool. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna build a material and this will kind of give you a really cool concept that you can go through and really add different textures and have a lot of fun with. Now, if you're not a big fan of building procedural materials, there are certainly a lot of really cool libraries out there for procedural materials. And I wanna shout out one, which is the one that I made. So the add-on is called Real-Time Materials. It's linked in the description. I'm just gonna show it really quickly. So say we have our model here, and this is one of my favorite materials, the chipped paint material. You can find it right there. But say, hey, I wanna make this guy carbon fiber. Well, we have carbon fiber, and we'll say we'll throw this carbon fiber right on this material, and there we go. And then what you can do is go down here to your controls and up your scale to make him look bigger or smaller, and there we go. Now we have this really cool looking material. And then you can bring that clear coat off and that roughness up and you can have some fun with that. But we don't just have carbon fiber, we have a lot of really cool things. We even have some pretty nice wood. So hey, I wanna give this guy kind of this herringbone wood material. Let's go with this guy here. We'll add that there and then we'll bring up that scale of course. And now we have this wooden character and maybe that scale was a bit too much there. But again, you get full control of roughness, all that stuff, even with your cloth, let's make this guy a cloth. This is the last one I'll show. Then we'll go into building the material. We'll add him, make him cloth, and right down here, you can make him whatever cloth you want him to be. These are in the description right now, and I made a code just for this video. If you use the code three at checkout, that will give you 25% off. With that being said, let's go and build that material. So let's go and click onto the shading tab, and we'll get, so let's go up here to the shading tab, and let's build our material. Let's go ahead and click new. We're gonna make this guy metallic. And what we're gonna do is goof with the roughness for the most part here. And what I wanna do is teach you a principle that you can apply different textures to to get different looks and really take this to another level and be very diverse with what you wanna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and shift A search and get two color ramps right here. And then we're gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna move them over. 
and then I'm gonna get a mix RGB and we're gonna plug both of them into this and that's because we're gonna be plugging two textures in here and the color ramps really allow you to have more control which you will see in just a minute. So plug this and then I'm gonna plug this mix straight into the roughness. So two materials, we're gonna get in a Voronoi material and in a uh, noise texture here. With the Node Wrangler add-on in, uh, enabled comes Blender by default, just hit Control T and then we're gonna go ahead and get the uh, object coordinate so you can apply this material to other things and then plug this vector here. Plug the color of the Voronoi and the color of the noise. So what are we gonna do here? So first off, play with your factor until you get just the noise texture. We're gonna edit that first. So get your detail to 12 and your roughness pretty high up. And then what you can do here is crunch this in and then crunch this in for a much more dramatic look. And then just to really even out the roughness here so it's not as you know reflective as a mirror, now we have some nice roughness here. And we're gonna do the same thing up here. So bring your factor so we can just see the Voronoi. We're gonna go from this to Manhattan. And then we're gonna bring that scale up a little bit so it looks a little bit better and just cool in my opinion. Bring this in, bring this in, and then make this one a little less rough by pulling that up. And now we have this cool thing. Watch how cool this is. And you can do this with any texture you want. I'm gonna bring the factor over to the noise texture. Typically, leave it at that, and maybe we'll also make this a bit darker. So now we have this cool, really heavy looking metallic material, but let's make it look more unique by introducing a little bit of Voronoi. And look at that. Now we have a really unique looking material. And if we bring up the scale of the Voronoi to make it a little more obvious, notice not only do we have a really cool rough, just very basic rough material, but now we have a little bit of a pattern going in there, giving it a much more unique look. And you can plug this into the bump and have a lot of fun and really do some cool stuff with this. Um, again, you can plug any material, I mean a texture you want, even an image texture with text or just whatever bumps, and you can have some fun introducing a shape with very gritty roughness, so you can have this roughness metallic material and introduce it. So this is what I mean by just kind of dive deep into procedural materials and learn these techniques so you can have a lot more control and be a lot more expressive with what you're doing. In the description, there are tons of my uh, procedural shading tutorials, so check those out if you want. And let's move on to the last tip. All right, so the last tip to really elevate your artistry is with animation. So, so here's the animation with just default Bezier keyframes. And if you don't know what I mean by Bezier, if you've ever animated something in Blender, you'll notice, say you have a, a ball that's moving from the left to the right. You'll notice it starts slow, speeds up, and then slows down. It's like, like that. I don't, that may have been a horrible uh, representation, but that's called Bezier, where it's slow, speeds up, and then slows down again. Linear would, be just, would just be, that's linear, like that. Bezier, and uh, my air conditioner is turning on, so we'll try to ignore that. Um, but that's gonna give you by default just this slow down, speed up, and slow down motion, but let's give it some more control. So here's the animation with some um, editing in what we're calling the graph editor. And that's giving you a lot more control. Notice it's a lot more snappy, a lot more alive, and it's just much more expressive. So let me show you quickly how that works, and I'll link in the description a video dedicated to the graph editor. So what I'm gonna do is you'll, you know, you'll have your object. We'll go over here to the animation tab. And this is where we're gonna, gonna pull up all of our stuff. And then we're gonna see we have our animation right there. And I'm gonna go over here to what's called the graph editor. And this is where you can edit your keyframes. So the first thing I wanna edit is the movement from right to left. So notice, so he's gonna come in like that. And it's really just kind of boring. So what I wanna do is it to speed up and then slow down rather than being then kind of slow down, speed up, slow down. Just come in and then slow down really slow at the end. And that's very simple. So if you go down here, you'll notice the X location right here. I'm gonna click on this keyframe, which is this specific guy where he stops and just pull it in. And once you notice this steep goes a lot steeper. So by default, it was here. We're making it more dramatic and watch how he behaves when he comes in. Notice that much quicker and much more and it's slow, it's quicker and then it slows down. Um, so it's not very even and that's what we want. And then let's do the opposite thing on the way out. We'll take this guy, the keyframe that ends, and do the same thing so when he leaves, he leaves really quickly and then he slows down like that. Now, now that we have that, notice how he comes in, goes out. Now I wanna animate 
this right here, these double rotations. I want it to be really quickly and then slow down like that. And so the way to do that is we'll go here to the, it looks like it's gonna be the Y rotation. So we're gonna go here to the Y Euler rotation and we're gonna to try to view that keyframe right there. And the same thing, if we want it to slow, I mean, be really quick on the get-go, take this last keyframe, pull him in like this, and then check this out. Slows down really nicely. Now this is a very simple demonstration of the graph editor. You can go nuts with it and make your animations super unique and super cool. But if we just press play, goes in, animates in a really cool way, and he's out of there. So those are my three tips on how to really get better as an artist and improve in these three different ways. There's a lot of other ways, but I found these to be kind of the most actionable that you can really learn today. And my channel has a lot of really cool stuff that I love to talk about it. So if you wanna check out those tutorials, linked in the description, I mentioned real-time materials. If you wanna check out real-time materials, that is in the description as well. Uh, but thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.